And welcome to our meteorology segment. We've got some extreme weather striking southeastern Texas, especially. Let's get to it. First, the weather.gov warning map. And you can see all kinds of flood warnings around the, uh, the Gulf Coast there, especially Texas and Louisiana, including some flash flood warnings there. You can see those red areas. Those are flash floods. flood advisories, and some special marine warnings there as well. That's weather.gov. Let's take a look at surface winds here of the eastern world. We'll get back to the U.S. at the end. There are surface winds of the eastern world. Here are the jet streams of the east. And we see tripled up jet streams there over the Pacific Ocean. Doubled up jet streams in the southern hemisphere. Here are the jet streams of the Western world. And the jet stream not helping to move this weather out of Texas. That is why you're getting that stagnation. And you're seeing very incoherent winds, which are not allowing these systems to move to the east as they normally would. The jet stream is way too far north for that. There are the surface winds of the Western world. Next, taking a look at lightningmaps.org for your real-time lightning map. And yowzers, there is a lot of lightning here south of Houston, also southeast of San Antonio. If you've got a view of these thunderheads, go out and have a look. Maybe take some time-lapse photography of it. Maybe take some videos of it as you may be able to get some imagery of things like sprites and green elves and red jellyfish and green clovers and blue diamonds and purple horseshoes above the clouds. You need to be about 80 kilometers away from a large massive thunderstorm and check out the lightning. It is quite intense around the Texas Gulf Coast. So here's the NASA GOES lightning mapper and check out the lightning Pretty epic. Continuing on to talk about climate. Oh my God. Antarctica must be melting. It must be melting, folks. And just a little bit about Antarctica. The ice sheets in Antarctica formed about 34 million years ago when the planet was 3 degrees Celsius warmer than it is today. Let me repeat that. The Antarctican ice sheets formed about 34 million years ago when the planet was 3 degrees Celsius warmer than today, which perhaps that's why people are very concerned about 1 degree Celsius of climate change. So here's a Fizz.org alarmist article about climate. Antarctica is headed for a climate tipping point by 2060. Oh my God, we're, we're going to die because because sea levels are going to rise some amount, allegedly. Because of what? what? Why, folks? Because of carbon dioxide, allegedly. Do you believe that? Do you believe that sea levels are going to rise because of carbon dioxide? Do you think that carbon dioxide is controlling Earth's climate? I'll just, I'll just put a pin in that and bring that up at a later time. And I'll let this article scroll before we look at some other data. Oh my God, a new study shows that if emissions continue at their current pace by about 2060, the Antarctic ice sheet will have crossed a critical threshold and committed the world to sea level rise that is not reversible on human time scales, pulling carbon dioxide out of the air that at that point won't stop the ice loss it shows. And by 2100, sea level could be rising more than 10 times faster than today. Are you scared and spooked? Let's take a look at some data about Antarctica. Global Cryosphere Watch has some, and we'll take a look at some of the features here in the Southern Hemisphere, since Antarctica is now in the news. So here's the ice extent, and you can clearly see that the Antarctican ice extent is right in the meaty part of the range here. It's the red line, and it's right in the range of the 1980s and 1990s and 2000s and 2010s. 
the ice extent in Antarctica is currently right in the normal range. Again, the red line. I would also note that 2014 had the highest extent of Antarctic ice ever measured. Here you can see once again, right in the meaty part of the range with the Antarctic ice extent. And of course, 2014, having seen the highest ever measured. I'll just leave that there and continue on. Here's where pressure cells are currently located. And let's advance this windy.com European forecast for pressure. Here's where pressure is now. And here's where we expect pressure to be at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time tomorrow. Strong low pressure system there in the north central Rockies. Continuing on. Here is the tropical tidbits forecast for precipitation. And it's been downgraded a little bit. It looks like the 20 inches of rain is going to fall in the Gulf of Mexico. So at least that's a little bit of good news there. This is the forecast through 12 universal time on Friday, which would be 7 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That's the forecast for total accumulated precipitation according to the GFS model. Next, the U.S. Doppler radar map. And check out those extreme storms in East Texas. They're taking their good old time, and it has to do with the jet stream not providing an impulse and dry mass of air. Here is the cloud layer, and here's the scenario for water vapor. So you can see the jet stream is nowhere near these areas. And as we said for the last couple days, that's causing this whole thing to stagnate. This dry mass of air here is not providing any sort of an impulse. And this moisture is butting up against this dry mass of air, which is causing it to stall even further. And that's sort of the source of your heavy rains there in eastern Texas. Hopefully that helped. I know there's been lots of flooding. We hope things are working out well down there. I've heard about people taking kayaks home from school. Best wishes to East Texas. And that's today's meteorology segment. Thanks for tuning in.